When Joy Kagawa set out to write about the persecution and the internment of Japanese Canadians during the Second World War, she had a lot to work with, most of all her own story. Joy was just a young girl when she and her family were uprooted from their home and sent away to Slocan, British Columbia. They were among the roughly 22,000 Japanese Canadians evacuated from the coast, separated from their families, and relocated in internment camps following the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. Joy's novel, Obosan, recounts those dark days in our history as seen through the eyes of a child. And while the story of Obosan is very much her own, it belongs to all Canadians. You have to remember, Aunt Emily said, you are your history. When the Canadian government apologized for the injustices carried out, it was Obasan that was read in the house. There are some nightmares from which there is no waking. To describe the impact of the internment. Now Joy, who has written two more novels, several volumes of poetry, and seen her childhood home transformed into an historic landmark and a refugee for writers, is working on a memoir. It's called Gently to Nagasaki. Please give a warm welcome to Joy Kagawa. What a pleasure. Thank you. How are you? Good. Thank you. <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you. How is uh, Gently to Nagasaki going? Oh, it's um, right now it's sitting at my long term editors. Mm -hmm. It'll be ready, I hope. I hope they'll take it. Did the book end up being what you started out writing? Um, it started and stopped and started and stopped and started and stopped. At some point I said, it's got this title. It didn't have a book with it, it was just the title. Um, and at one point I said, I can't keep starting and stopping. It has to go. Then I regretted it because it was a memoir and that's the hardest thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. um, so it was the journey of a leaf in the wind. And um, how, how windy was it? Very windy yeah. through the November winds yeah. in Vancouver, and yet the leaf stayed on the tree. Nice. So if it's a leaf in the wind that stays on the tree, it doesn't have to travel hither and yon, but it did that too. Right. When I wrote Obasan, there was Nagasaki that arrived at the beginning and at the end, which is something I didn't know the whole time that I was writing it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so the title arrived as Gently to Nagasaki. I had no idea what that meant. Um, but what I know now is that's my personal hell. So I had to go there and, um, and find the goddess of mercy. So that's what the job is, is to find um, the necessary presence of mercy in the world today. Do we have a lack of mercy now? Yes, we do have a lack of mercy because what we have is the constricted, fearful heart. I mean, if you look at the budgetary requirements of the countries, it is about being afraid and therefore having to have a military. Mm -hmm. And that's the scarcity model that is um, paramount in the world today. And what we need is the abundance model. We, and, and we need to have um, mercy and abundance together as one thing. Do you, do you fancy yourself a, a, a religious woman? <sighs> That's such a bad word today, you know? Well, but I think, yeah. as Hans Kung said, if we want peace among the nations, we have to have peace among the religions first. So what I see coming out of Nagasaki is there's this wonderful man there. Oh, I should tell you about Nagasaki, why it's important. It's because when the bomb dropped on it, people don't know that this bomb that came out of the Christian West fell upon their best friends in the West, which like is... 500 feet from the church, right? Isn't yeah, it? yeah, it fell exactly pinpoint in the Urakami neighborhood in the valley between mountains and it killed the hidden Christians of Japan. They were the preeminent um, place of Christianity in all of East Asia. That's who they killed. So what that means to me is that um, when you set out to kill your enemy, you're going to kill your best friend and therefore the best friend is within every enemy and the job is to find out how this is so. Have you always been in this position? Have you, no, it, no, no. It took this book to make me realize this and to go along um, from enemy to enemy, of which I have quite a few, <laughs> and trying to see where the friendship is there within that and realizing that without truth there is no friend. What sorts of enemies do you think you have? Well, I had a lot of people who hated the Kogawa house in Vancouver. A lot of people don't know about the house. Talk about the house. Well, it's 
it's this little, I mean, I wrote about it in Nova Sun, if anybody has read that, and I longed for this thing, after, you know, during the, during the internment when we were taken away from our homes. I just dreamed of going back to that place. It was a real house, you know, that we were wearing the shacks. And then one day in 2003, on the day it happened to be when Mars was closest to the Earth, which is why I remember it was in August, that um, I just happened to go by and I saw the for sale signs. Oh. So um, then I did a reading in the house and, and all these people came and, and the Vancouver Opera people were there and we sang the songs and it was just so, it was such a great day and I just cried my heart out. I was so happy to be there. And then, and then this movement just started out of nowhere, and uh, it was so dumbfounding that and I the just. The movement uh, is to preserve the house, right? Yeah. And uh, it's, it's writer's retreat, it's all that. Uh, yeah, and it's, it's happened, of course. Yeah. And right now it's facing this, whatever it is. Um, and, um, but so, I mean, it, it just seemed to me that, um, I mean, I didn't know how, how I'd won the lottery, you know? I didn't know how it was that all those people lost their property. How come mine was safe? No wonder people are mad and jealous and so on, because it's not fair, because there's all those people that lost everything um, except themselves. Yeah, the, what do you make of the legacy of Obasan? I mean, the house obviously being part of it. What do you make of how, I mean, it's taught in high schools and it's become this thing now. This thing? Yeah, this thing here, this little thing that you can't have imagined it would become. Never, the never, never could I have imagined it. No, I couldn't have. Imagined. What do I think of it? Well, I think it's miraculous. <laughs> I think that my life is just filled with all these unbelievably miraculous things that keep happening, like being here and talking to you. Oh, this be... feels miraculous <laughs> to me, too. Well, let's play a clip of Ed Broadbent and this book. Take a look at this. The fact is, I never got used to it, and I cannot. I cannot bear the memory. There are some nightmares from which there is no waking. That's the great Ed Broadbent reading your book in, yeah. the, in the house. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I watched that and I was just numb with astonishment. It's part of a huge he, day in Parliament, right? Oh, I mean, what a life, you know, I'm so grateful for this life. It's uh, unbelievable. Here's what else happened in Parliament and it, this is con directly connected. I speak for members on all sides of the House today in offering to Japanese Canadians the formal and sincere apology of this Parliament for those past injustices against them and against their families. You know, can you tell me what that means to me? Mm. What that means that day, September 22, 1988, what that means to me is there's a point in your life when you come to the crossover point and you have to cross over at that point. If you stay stuck in um, the identity of the victim, mm -hmm. then, and if you therefore stay focused on how hurt you are, then you can do incredibly bad things to other people um, because then you're not aware of their suffering, you're only aware of yours. When you're a victim, that's what you are. You're aware of your own suffering. So. Recognizing that moment of crossover and saying, okay, I'm over here now. I mean, sometimes you get thrown back over here, but it's so important. That's the moment of crossing over that, that matters. Mm -hmm. That's why events like that are important. Um, when there is an acknowledgement, when you are seen, when you know that you are seen. What a real pleasure. Thank you for spending the time with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Her upcoming memoir is Gently to Nagasaki. For information uh, on historic Joy Kigala, go to strombo.com. We'll post it all up there. We'll see you right back.